He got in a stance. He was ready to come off the line of scrimmage, and uh, McLovin was a defensive back there. You were Jason Seahorn. He just smashed it with a pie. I Stop had... with the Seahorn stuff. Hey, is is Marshall and the guys on TV? We have made Seahorn greater later <laughs> than he actually was in reality. Let's stop with that madness. Seahorn shut you down. Stop man. with that madness. He did, of didn't all he? The things in the Jason world. Jason Seahorn. Did. He shut you down. <laughs> you, you, there are a lot of people, man. There are a lot of people you could have picked out that really gave me some battles. I don't know why. Well, we McLovin keep is Seahorn. white. I had to have a defensive oh, back. I understand. How many white okay. quarterbacks, Mike? <laughs> I don't, it's not a long list. Here. Hey, I, eh, okay, you're right. I like, got like, like Larry I got Wilson you. or somebody. Got, from the, Scott Case. You got some Scott Case in him. Well, Scott wasn't a cornerback, though. Scott, Scott I played a little corner. He had some corner ability, but he was safety. Scott knocked me out. Scott Scott hit me hard. It's about, about as hard as I've ever been hitting him and Vincey Glenn. That's my dude. I saw Scott a couple weeks ago, man, and he's still a good dude, man. But it, it, he, he looks a little like Scott Case. I, I would give him Scott Case. I'll take that. He would like to be Scott now, Case. Now, does it bother you? This, this Jason Seahorn thing bothers you. This thing it? is growing legs, man. But, why, but, okay, who's bringing it up? Other than I just use well, it as a reference well, point as right, a defensive but back. No, on our show, every week, Marshall brings it up. Marshall, <laughs> fuck, I swear, it brings it up every week, man. I was like, listen, man. But you know why he brings it up? Because of this reaction right here. Yes, okay. 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 exactly. Then stop reacting yes, this it. way. Stop telling lies. Tell the truth. I mean, you guys can't. Let's just see on. But you know what? Corner. Okay, let, it was let, a good corner. But, th- but this is he what happened. He couldn't do that. Isn't this the story though? You didn't know that he was white when you played against him. Is no, it, no, is that no, the story? No, 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 no. I know. <laughs> I, I, I knew Jason Seawan was uh white. White. I knew he was oh, okay. white. He was I right thought, there. I thought there I was the that. story. And that... He was a good player. Now he was a good player. But I, I guys, I, I, I beat up on guys like Deion Sanders, <laughs> Daryl Green, Walt Wilson, and Neil Wood. All these guys happen to have gold jackets. And then you guys throwing up Jason Seahorn. Not that he was a good player, but But you know what? Player, there's, a lot of, there's, there's always a Hall of Fame pitcher who has problems with a guy who wasn't a great hitter. The one guy. The one guy. My right? one guy was Robert Massey. I'll give you that. It was Robert Massey. Robert Massey. I, I could come off 160 on Daryl Green and have three for 38 against Robert Massey for some reason <laughs> with the Saints, you know. And the only reason Massey gave me problems is because I, I, when he was in college, I, I built a relationship with him to help um, Drew Rosenhaus get his first client, and, and I gave him too many of my secrets. That was the only guy that I went into a game and I would say I had problems with. Everybody else, I beat him Except down. for Seahorn. Seahorn owned you, but – you know, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Stay here. Paulie, let's bring in Jason Seahorn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I love Seahorn. He's my man. He's my man. He's oh, good. He's good okay. uh, he's Michael good. Irvin, the Hall of Famer. He's uh, he's here in the man cave. In the man cave. What do you think of this man cave? I, I, I you know, listen. I, I like this inside setup. I, I, I love when I first came in. The first thing I noticed was you got 88 on as a guest. I see that. I like that. Then I had to go to the bathroom. You have Newton and Manziel. And I was like, Newton or Manziel? Let me try Newton, you know. I, 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 do you guys kind of take a pick and see who goes into what bathroom? Yeah. The most? N- no. But one's yeah. a one jersey, one's a two jersey. Right, I know. But yeah. but, but but different people in, in both in, in some situations. So I just took the Newton anyway. You went good. Cam Newton bathroom? Yeah, yeah, I went Cam Newton bathroom <laughs> over to Manziel. Equal so I, opportunity. Right, well, and, and I love Manziel. That's my boy now. I talked to Johnny, but since we both have had issues, I thought we need to split up. You know what I'm saying? When's the last time you talked Manziel? Uh, probably a couple, couple, uh, couple, couple weeks ago. Almost two months ago, probably. Yeah. But Johnny's good, man. Good, man. Does I, he want to play football? Of course he wants to play. I, I he, he wants to play. He'll say he wants to play. But, you know, wanting to and, and, and getting all your ducks lined up in a row are two different things. A lot of people want to do things, but what it takes to do it sometimes is a little more difficult. I don't know if it's a top priority for him. Yeah. I, 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 I just, just doesn't feel like that. You, you had to make a decision. Yeah. You had to balance what you were doing with your life. You had to have that come to yeah. Jesus moment where you said, if I go this way, I may go all the way this way. Or I can go this way to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but 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 listen. And he's not talented enough to be what you were. Well, here too now. My issue, my issues really came about after I was a star in the NFL. <clears throat> Johnny's issues is it came about before he was even really playing in the NFL. And so, so two different things in, in that perspective. You know what I mean? So I, I I know Johnny wanted to play in the league, and I was hoping he played in the league. I love stories like Johnny Manziel and guys that are 
had issues and, and come back and fight back. And I pull for those guys. So I hope he gets an opportunity and come back and show everybody. It's a great inspirational, motivational, something I can use moving forward, talking with people if he could do it. What if uh, Jerry Jones reached out to him? What Not about it? Bring him in as a backup quarterback? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted that before. I don't know that I necessarily want it now. You know, we have a young guy. We got we 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 we're set pretty good right there in the youth category. Yeah, we don't need to add more youth to. The but Jerry youth. did love him during the draft. He's a smart guy, Jerry. Like anybody, to keep the Dallas Cowboys on the lips of everybody. Explain to me the Tony Romo situation of of how this plays out because that we don't. There's no resolution here. We're still waiting for. Tony Romo to find out what he's doing with his life. But but it's, it's smart what they're doing right now. I don't know why they even announced that they were going to release him when they did. I, I mean, I'd imagine, you know, when I talked to Jerry uh, last week, I talked to Jerry last week, and I, and I called, well, he called me, and we were talking for a moment, and, and I, I said, hey, tell me about our boy. He said, oh, wait, yeah, yeah, no, but Tony, that's, no, 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 Jerry, no, 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 I don't even want to hear about Tony. Don't say a word about Tony. Tell me about Zeke. I don't, <laughs> tell me about Zeke. What's going on with Zeke? I, I, the Tony thing, man, I, I don't want to, I'm not a reporter. I don't want to report it. I'll just talk about it after it happens. But, but I don't know why Jerry would say anything at first when, when you hold all the cards. Just wait, just wait. Tony's a big piece for a team like Houston, a team like Denver, that can really get them over the top. Somebody's going to make a move. And to this, I don't know why Houston won't throw up something. Throw out anything. You threw 72 million to Mark Osweiler. That didn't work. Yeah. So you can't just throw up a few draft picks and say, Jerry, take this right now. I don't understand that. How nervous would you be if you're Jerry and Tony Romo goes to Houston? I I want to be nervous. Well, I, the I, proximity. Texas, yeah, yeah. But, dude, listen. Never in your lifetime, my lifetime, and your kids' lifetime will the Houston Texans take over Texas from the Dallas Cowboys. Never. Don't even sweat it. Don't worry about it. I think people, when they say that, uh, I, I don't think that has me. What if, who has a better chance of winning the Super Bowl? If Tony mean? Romo went to Houston. I still think Dallas have a better chance to win the Super Bowl. And who cares if they're playing in the Super Bowl, then that, that'll be something. And I still would take Dallas in that game and win in that Super Bowl. Why, 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 why would it be a problem? I just throw it out there, Mike. Oh, that's what you do. That's, I just, that's I, I do. All I do is like John Stockton. You're Malone on the fast break. Yeah. That's all it is. Well, can, can we be somebody that won the championships since oh, I won Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I, I like Stockton and Malone, but they delivered just not a ring. Well, who else do you, who else can I be? I mean, I I didn't win a championship either, so I'm sort of Stockton. <laughs> but I got enough for both of I us. Can be Steve so Mann. we can be no, we can, can be. be we can be I can I can blow you a few of my rings. So let's be somebody that won some rings. You don't and, have your rings on today, right? No, no, no. I, I don't. That's wear only them. Super Bowl time, right? I, I don't. I don't. I don't ever. I don't ever. Those wear are them. those are ugly. No, they're just, yeah, they're ugly. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's hard like you to just call. Can't wear these them. are Super Bowl rings. You don't call them ugly. They, they, Gaudy. They, these these are er, God. Gaudy's good, but Gaudy's brother. That's that's cool. Brothers <laughs> like God. I, I, I can take God. I, I, I want you to see my ring. That's okay. But ugly, Mike. I, they I don't need ugly. to see it. You played it. You won it. You don't. Well, you don't they, need to show a ring. No, I don't. I don't, but when you win one ring, you do. Montana's not wearing his. Because Joe won enough. He's like me. When you win enough, you don't need to wear them. If you just win one, you have to remind people <laughs> you won Then that you one. have to wear right, it. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, if you win one, you wear it and show it all the time. If you win as many as I have, they know you have them. As many as Montana has, he, you know you have them. Best quarterback of all time? Tom Brady. Period. Be because he has what? more rings? Be he has more rings, and he's done it. In a different time, in a different era, with gr different groups of guys, and getting the same results, it, it, it's no doubt in my mind he, he's the best, he's the greatest of all time. And I, I know a lot of you guys don't like that. A lot of people don't like it because they like to horn in on all of this, the flake gate and all that bull made and all that junk. But the reality is what it is. The man is the greatest. And when you put air in the balls, or when you took away the spy cam, whatever you say he was doing. He still keeps whooping, tat 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 tat, tat <laughs> your butt. So let it go, people. Let it go. Who would you rather have you throw passes to? What do you mean? They, Brady is your quarterback or Montana? Aikman's off the board. 
Okay, that, 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 thank you. See, Troy, you're off the board, Troy. Cause I, yeah, because you weren't going to pick Troy. You were still going to pick Brady or Montana. No, no, no. I was going to pick Troy. Why would I pick somebody oh, outside of Troy? You're not going to pick the greatest quarterback of all time? No, no. He's the greatest quarterback of all time for his system. Troy was the greatest in my system, and I played best in that system. I got I, You can't okay. get me in that, Dan. Okay. I'm going to see Troy next week. You can't so, get me in that. So, <laughs> who do you want throwing you the ball? Brady or Montana? I, 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 either one, but I, I would here still say Brady. Brady's a bad man, man. Brad, man, I love Joe Mo. I love him. When I see him, I love him. But, but boy, Don Brady is, is a Joe, Brady has done it with different groups of guys, with different skill sets within that group. You know, uh, uh, Joe had his guys. And, and, and speaking of that, God bless Dwight Clark. And I just all saw that through, news. Man. Yeah. 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 I saw him. Uh, I was ALS. with him. I saw him. I, I was with him, man. Let me. And I, since he announced it, now I can share. It. Uh, I was with him last week, week and a half ago, and he and he shared it with me that he had LS and everything. And man, it was like, my God, you know, it was it was hard news. But one thing I'll say this, man. He says his guy, you know, his owner, his man, has called him almost every day, every day to make sure he's okay, see if he needs anything. I was like, boy, that that's great, man. Cause I, I said, I, see, that's what's great. See, he and I, we have the same kind of owners. You know, we we play for the same kind of owners, and, and and I just love that, man. So I'm praying, I'm praying for Dwight Clark, former Niner great. Yeah, <clears throat> Dwight Clark announced that uh, he has ALS. Yes. So, all right, uh, we'll come back with Michael Irvin. We'll uh, dip into the deep end uh, with Ter- out. Terrell Owens with uh, the Hall of Fame. Is he helping himself or hurting himself here? Well, it's a good conversation. We shall have that conversation. Yeah. I, I, I talked to T.O. about a week and a half you ago. Got, all right. Hold on. We should talk this, about that. It's called a tease. I know. I got it. So when you go to break, you give him a tease. That's the tease yeah. that I talked to him a week and a half ago. So Michael talked to T.O. a week and a half ago. About we'll, the same topic. We'll find out what that conversation was all about right after this here on the Dan Patrick Show. He's got a new movie. It's called wow. Slamma Jamma. Yes, sir. It's out uh, next Friday. That's March 24th. You play an attorney. It would be Friday. Friday. That, that would be Friday. This Friday. Yes. March 24th. Yeah, you said next. This next Friday. Okay. We I haven't got gotcha. to this Friday, but it comes out March 24th. Uh, so- <laughs> okay. So you play an attorney, Mike. <laughs> You've been around enough. You you know. <laughs> you, you, I love you, 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 I love you, 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 my you were just drawn upon <laughs> previous situations here. You're playing attorney, defense attorney, I'm assuming. Well, uh, I play an agent. I play an agent. Oh, well, I thought you played an attorney. Well, I, I, I'm an agent. Well, I'm an attorney. And I, you know, I, I did get uh, law lessons of the law. I paid a hefty price for that lesson in the law. So so I, I, I do get a chance to put it to use here in this movie. And it's it's, it's a movie about uh, Chris Staples, who, who's the main character in the movie, a guy that plays basketball, and he, he gets in a situation and goes to prison, and he gets out of prison and tries to put it all back together. So it's a movie about redemption, which which is really at home for me. You know, anything that involves sports and then talks about redemption and reviving one life's giving another opportunity, that's my world. So I, I really enjoy it during the movie. Who else is in the movie? Well, we, if, well people you wouldn't know, like Jose Seiko comes by in the movie. I, I thought that was fascinating that, you know, guys like me, him, guys that have had issues are in this movie with the kid speaking to him about issues. So I, I said, you know, in this movie, I said, this would be great. I, I should do this. I won't have to go and study with anybody, do any method acting. I, I live this world right here. So it worked out really good. It, it, it was a fun time to shoot the movie, shot in L.A., being around those kids. Man, I'm going to tell you something, Dan. Them dudes are phenomenal dunking basketballs. It's amazing what they do dunking a basketball, how high they jump. You know, the guy Porter, he's five feet nothing and can get up and dunk a basketball like that. It really is an amazing gift. And we're all lucky to have had that gift. No, no, no. You don't have that gift. Well, not anymore. Dan, you ain't, you never had that gift. Dan, have, did you, have you ever dunked? Yeah. I'm talking about a regulation size goal. Absolutely. Without a uh, trampoline Absolutely. or anything. Absolutely. 
Oh, really? Not even. Yeah, it's not even. It's, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm being straight with you here. Yeah, you've never. Done I, no I will swear on. Well, I won't swear on my children, but I would swear on anything else. But if it's the I'll swear the on truth, the Bible. Why not swear on your children? Well, I don't want to do truth, that. I swear on the Bible. How about that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with JC on you. <laughs> yeah, now what do you got to say? Okay. I'm going big man. I'm going JC. That's, that's, that's something that my brother like do, man. I swear you on my, on my mama's my daddy grave. On my mama's, well, all right, I got a couple. They already gone. What difference does it make? All right, all right. Let, me, I gotta, let me bring this up. Terrell Owens didn't get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Is he helping or hurting himself for next year with the Hall of Fame? How he's well, lobbying. Logic would say he's not helping himself. Logic would say that if, if what we're talking about, everybody's saying his numbers are what they are and he should be in on the numbers alone, and I, and I do believe that, and they're saying there's other reasons that he's not in because of the way he were with teams and mm -hmm. things like that, and now you're spewing the same things at some of the, the, uh, the, the voters, then, then you would say he's not helping himself. But that's logic, and this thing is all illogical. It, it, it's not all about logic, and, and you just never know. I, I talk with T.O. Should know? he be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, absolutely. Okay. No doubt. Let, let's just stop the mess right now. Yes, he should be in the Hall of Fame. And I, and I talk with him. And uh, a cu couple of weeks ago, we were shooting a commercial, he and I in L.A. And then, and, and we had, that's when I found out he had this little jacket. I don't know if you have you guys seen yeah, the jacket. Yeah, I have seen it, yeah. With the number, with yeah, it's Hall of Fame it. jacket, yeah. He had the jacket with him. And I said, Tio, he was telling me about it. I said, don't do that. I said, don't, don't, don't. don't. You shouldn't do that. No. You shouldn't do it. Just, just let it play. I said to him, guys, I said, listen, let us fight for you. Right now, you have everybody fighting for you. But if you jump in the fight, you no longer are the victim. And people turn on you. Just just stay out. And he's like, no, man. And he honestly said, he said, you know, it doesn't matter to him anymore. He didn't get in on the first but two it does, years. But it does matter. But but this, this is what I said to him, Dan. And, 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 and I said, Tio, listen, man. I said, you're fighting for the wrong thing. The fight is not you against the writers. The fight is for you to, for, for you be in, be, to be in the hall and have your great-grandkids and family walk through there and get a sense of pride that knows what, what is in the Hall of Fame is also in them. You're fighting for what's coming after you. Don't fight what's in front of you. Fight for what's coming after you. And 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 you know, I, I keep telling him that. That's what I think his focus should be on. But he can't change. This is who he's always been. So to ask him to all of a sudden look at it differently, because I was hoping he'd just say, it's unfortunate. I hope they do their research and I get a chance for well, next year. Well, let's break that back down, Dan, on, on he can't change. Everybody changes because everybody we hope. Do you grow. think he? But has he changed? We grow. Can he change? Yeah, yes, you get you from mature. this right here. You mature. Yeah. This is all I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, he's I, gonna well, fight it, Mike. How, how does it make it sound if I say yes and he's fighting <laughs> it like it is? You know, what, do I, what do I look like right here? But 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 you know, and and after that, right? I, I get a phone call from Chris Myers, from Gary Myers, and he, he's asking me about To, and I said to him the same thing. I said to you guys just then about T.O., you're fighting for what's coming after you. And he wrote something, and T.O. called me mm -hmm. a week later. Hey, man, what would you say? I just told you the same thing I said to you in the, when we were shooting the commercial. You know, and so, it so feels he's like fight with all of it. It feels like they're now they're going back and looking at the number of drops he's had. It feels like they're changing the rules. He got to the two-yard line, and now they've sent him back to the 15-yard line. And I... It, it's it, it's unfortunate because I, he's a Hall of Famer. Right. I don't think they're looking at him the same way they have I, other players. Well, let, let's be real here now. It, it's been difficult for a lot of receivers in, in this, on this walk. I mean, Ark Monk waited forever, and he when he retired, he was top of the league across the board with championship rings, you know, and, and they still made him wait forever. So it's just something that they do with wide receivers sometimes. You but know? they made you wait. Yes. They made you wait because of off the field, not on the field. Well, and, right? I, and I, yeah, and I, but I is that fair? It, it, it's, well, listen, why, why, fair is one word. Just is another. They may think in their mind it's fair. I, I will say it's not just because the rules say that is not what you're supposed to take into account. Yeah. Just like the T.O. situation. So in trying to show me or teach T.O. or show someone uh, – or teach them a lesson, you're really breaking the rules in 
it, 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 you're being a hypocrite. You're being a hypocrite. Like, we're mad at you for breaking the rules, so we're going to break the rules on you. It makes no sense whatsoever. He's Michael Irvin, the playmaker of the movie, coming out this next Friday, <laughs> March 24th. It's called you, you, you see. Slamma Jamma. You don't want to be wrong. Uh, we, found, uh, we found Tom Brady's jerseys. They uh, were found in Mexico. Where he go? Sources close to me tell me they were found in Mexico. Mm. So you had the, the credentialed me- member of the media who took Brady's jersey from the Seattle Super Bowl and then came back for second helpings <laughs> in Houston, and now they tracked him down. You know anything else about this? Yeah, I don't. I, I tell you what I do know. Just if you got away with the crime the first time, don't return to the scene and commit the same crime. Do you think that jersey's worth $500,000? I, I think so now, yes. I, I didn't think so then. But I certainly think so now because all of the stuff that is added to it. This jersey's been everywhere. And and now even the one that, you know, you put these things together, you put two of those jer- those two jerseys together, you get a million dollars for them. Here's another question I have for you. And this came up during the season with somebody with the Cowboys, affiliated with the Cowboys, who said, you know, they never worry about Dak Prescott. They, they like who he is. They worry about right. Ezekiel Elliott off the field. Now, the worry was not, you know, is he committing crimes or anything? It's just being, enjoying who he is. Impulsive. Yes. Uh, how concerned would you be about Ezekiel Elliott off the field? Well, I, here again, I, I don't think, as they are saying, and, and I believe so too, I don't think he's going to do anything criminally, you know, where, where he's out committing crimes or anything. But, but you know, young man and impulsive and, and a lot of things around him, I, I can see where you should have some concerns there. I mean, hey, hey. <laughs> I've been right there, right there where he is. I know the trappings that come around. But you didn't have social media, though, Mike. And just the under, and that's what I'm saying, the understanding and awareness of what's going on around you. You know, like, it, like the other day, you knew, he had to know somebody shooting at. You had to know. Well, that. You're under Not that in, you should do it in the dark. But you're under investigation, you know Mike. I mean? You're under yeah. investigation with the NFL. Yeah, yeah, and and... and and, that, and that's the bad. It was, For it was assault. horrific. Time. It was horrific. That it was, let's, let's, let's stop. It, you know, plenty guys. I plenty guys. It was just a bad deal all around. It was. It was a bad was deal a bad all look. around. Bad but look. did you? When you watch it though, I'm watching it, and every time I see it, right, I watch it now, and I'm like, I can see the wheel spinning in his head. Like, should I? So I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Even now, I keep saying, don't do it. Yeah. Like, it'll change. It's not going to change. Every time I look at it, he's going to grab it, and, and, and he just shouldn't do it. All right, one more thing here, and that's Colin Kaepernick. Uh, is somebody going to give him a chance here? Uh, Spike Lee came out, the filmmaker, and said something's fishy that nobody's given him a chance. My point is... What's fishy? The fact that nobody's given him a chance. Now... I, I th- I'm going to read into this a little more with what Spike Lee said. Yeah. And that is Colin Kaepernick being black. What happened during the anthem? Like that, he's being blackballed. That, I'm going to read into it. He's, he's left it open to interpretation there. Um, and my point is, Colin Kaepernick put himself in this position. He took a stand. or um, He just didn't play well. Right. I, I, I got to factor that in. If, if Kaepernick had just played in the Super Bowl and was op- on the free market, people are going to take him if he didn't stand for the anthem. And you're not taking him now because I don't think he's proven himself to be good enough to take. Uh, post, post, post uh, Harbaugh leaving. Yeah. Right. You know, let, let's be real. And, and, and you have to be a specific type of a coach that knows how to get the best out of him. Do you think Harbaugh he's being black? Harbaugh guy. Well, I, I, I don't know that I can say he's being black ball. I mean, he just. He, he was just on the football field at the end of the season last season. Yeah. So, so you know, when you start saying someone's been blackballed, let me see him go a good year, a year and a half without anybody picking him up. Then you start looking at that and saying, wow. But at the end of the season, he was playing football. So it's, it's hard to say he's being blackballed right now. But I do say that. We know how important it is to find a quarterback, and we know the value of quarterback in this league. Yep. So, so, so for somebody – to not give him an opportunity that is eyebrow raising, eyebrow raising. You you raise an eyebrow. Is to he that. good enough? But I don't think he's. I, I can't go far as saying he's blackball right now. So the Jets, Browns needing a quarterback. They need a lot of things, and 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 they don't need 
other things that don't bring about wins on the football field, and those are the things that are coming with them. Yep. That's just the reality of it. So you can't get on the Jets and the Browns or those type of teams because they are already down in the gut, and then they bring in stuff that puts them farther down in the gut. They're, they're, they're trying to get out of that rut and, and change and turn things around, and I understand that too. The movie comes out this next Friday. It's called Slamma Jamma. Michael Irvin yeah. will be in there. Killing yeah. it. Yeah, killing it. Killing uh, it. Having uh, fun. Uh, thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for going out of your way. You, to, Phyllis, this was worth it. That pie to face smash, and the face thing to right smash there. McLovin? I need me some shots of that for my social media. That was worth it all. Man, I would do anything. I wish I could. D, D can I do that to you one day? When, when, when do you ever get a pie in the face? Does Dan ever get a pie in the face? Uh, I have. I had uh, one in Houston. And uh, in our celebrity bracket challenge for uh, March Madness, uh, the worst bracket gets a pie in the face. So I, I, didn't, I didn't ask you that. I said, have you ever gotten a yeah. pie in the face? Not just in Houston, oh, yeah. right here at home. You got it right in this room, right in this place. If you you take the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl, if they win the Super Bowl, you can hit me in the face with a Dan, pie. Dan, you skirted it first, again. I asked you. I did, I've not like, had a pie in the face this here. This is how the lawyers taught me to keep coming back to the question. But wait, I'm. This is my huddle. I'm Troy Aikman right and now. And that's the reason right there. I knew you never got the pie in the face because this whole building is your huddle. And if everybody else gets the pie in the face, and Dan, since it's my huddle, I don't get the pie in the face. Do you I understand want, that. You want me to give you a pie in the face right here? No, 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 All no. Right. I, don't, I wouldn't mind giving a pie in your face, though, Dan. That would be so fun. How about style. I give <laughs> you one, you give me one? <laughs> How about that, a little quid? Do you know, see... Do you what, want to do that right I now? I would look like <laughs> dark as I am with white powder all over <laughs> no, my no, face. No, we're not going down that road again. <laughs> I, Mike, Mike, I got a chocolate cream pie back there for you. <laughs> I'll hey, give if you I'll take be, a pie, I'll take a pie. We both do it right. right yeah, now. yeah. I'll do. I'll have them make it up here in the next fifteen minutes. <laughs> Unless you're afraid, Mike, you just called me out. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I stutter? Why do I have to come to take a pie in the face? You should have, all your dudes out here have taken a pie. You uh, should have already taken you, a pie. Did somebody just tap out? I I I think that, that I think Playmaker pie. just passed. Right, listen, I'm all in. Mike I'm just all tapped in down. Right, uh, how, can we, a, how can we decide who gets the pie? No, no, no. It's just I'll give you one, you give me one, Mike. <laughs> I've never had a pie in the face, D. I've never had a pie in the face. I, I have. I got, I got other interviews to go do. Oh, what do I look like with pies in okay. my face? That might be fun, though. That right. might be fun. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, I got another shirt to call. Pull up my other shirt so I can use this one later. And, and let's do it. Let's do it. You do it? Yeah, let's do all it. All right, all right. Uh, we need let's to have two pies uh, made up back there. Let's do it. If we can. All right. Uh, let's do it. We'll come back. We'll pie come, in the face. We'll come back. Let's, let's do it. Dan Patrick. This is too far, Michael. Michael Irvin uh, said that I wouldn't take a pie to the face, and I said I'd be more than happy to. Would he be willing to take a pie to the face? So uh, here we are with cream pies, chocolate cream pie for you, Mike. Uh, so this is what it comes down to. It's you. It's me. You ready? Three, set, go. Oh, <laughs> I just got the hell. That's an explosion. My goodness. I don't know if you got me. I don't know if you got me, Mike. I don't know if you got me. <laughs> That was a tie. I think that's a tie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got some Richie, shrapnel. And some weight behind it, too, now. Uh, you, so you got me on the nose, man. You, Mike, 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 Mike popped me on the nose. He got your bit. Yeah. That was all right, yeah. man. That was a, that's the first time I've ever got his pie to the face. <laughs> look good. I look like who I look like right now. I'm not making any comment. <laughs> I'm not making any comment. <laughs> Break. Uh, well, wow. You know what? It's probably best we take a break here. And yeah. We'll come back to close up shop here in the Dan Patrick Show right after this. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.